This year, we're really delighted to announce that our recipient is Howard Richards. He has just recently published his book, Economic, well, it's close to being published, Howard, I should say, and you're gonna to get to talk about it soon, but Economic Theory and Community Development. He has such an enormously important message to share. Howard, there you are, Howard. I'm adding you to the spotlight. Hooray, Hi. we made it. Congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. We're so happy to honor your lifetime of commitment to dignity in the world. And Evelyn, would you tell us about this video clip that we're gonna share? Uh, yes, this was in 2013. We were together in Pretoria in South Africa with our dear Catherine Odora Hoppers. And uh, we uh, were having many, many dialogues on Foucault. And at the end of all the dialogues, I challenged our dear Howard. And you will see just a small part of these challenges now. And you will keep talking just a little bit longer, Evelyn. So that, so that you can, yes, there we were sitting in, in Pretoria. And the lovely granddaughter of Howard was recording our dialogue. Thank you. <laughs> that gave me yes, enough time. I'm trying mm -hmm. to click all the right buttons, Howard, but this is a lovely introduction to you and the wonderful work you've done in the world. Mm -hmm. um. Welcome to this video. Today is the 6th of June, 2013, and we are here in Pretoria, South Africa. And I'm here with Howard Richards. He is a philosopher of social science. And I have challenged him and told him that he, after a life of gathering the knowledge of this world, of the philosophers of this world, he is a walking encyc encyclopedia. He knows so much. So after a long life of seeing the world and having studied so deeply, what would be your most important messages to the world? Well, I, I've been trying to think of what to say if I had an opportunity to say what most needs to be said in a few words. And I've come to a, a first conclusion, which is somewhat negative, And that is that the, uh, what, what one might call the, the normal solutions uh, will not work. We, we desperately need solutions to our problems, but it will not work to attribute our problems to people behaving badly or people behaving irrationally. That won't work because the prevailing standards of right and wrong and the prevailing standards of rationality are themselves dysfunctional. This, I, uh, Herbert Marcuse talks about irrational rationality and we also have what might be called a, a bad goodness. Uh, not, not that, I think it's a desirable first step for people to uh, conform to the norms of society as it is, and for people to be rational, rather than, that's, that's a good step in the right direction, but it's not gonna work. We're not going to get off the path to ecological destruction and unwinding of the social fabric by pointing at bad bankers or bad or greed or something like that yes that's a good mm -hmm. example if we uh, if we say well if the banker just weren't so greedy well okay but even if the bankers were perfectly correct according to the laws and ethics that prevail it still wouldn't work and the same is true of scientific research if we do scientific research with what commonly passes for scientific method, mainstream scientific method, these accumulating mountains of knowledge are not going to save us. So uh, that's a sort of a negative point that I simply cannot say in a few words what needs to be said about the need to uh, go beyond uh, calling for good behavior and rational action. Um, my co-authors and I have spelled this out in long books. So if you, if you read the long books, you'll see what I think, but I don't think there's any way to say it briefly. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, I think it's an extremely uh, important message mm -hmm. that... Yes, uh, I think that needs to be understood mm -hmm. since I think many people think that if the bad people would just stop being bad, 
Right. And if the crazy people just stop being crazy, right. then we could solve our problems, but we can't. Right. Because the entire systemic frames are geared towards, per design, towards that it can't work. That's right. The, the, the systemic frame is geared to an unsustainable relationship with nature, and it's geared to uh, a uh, destruction of culture, uh, leaving people alienated and normless. Right, and mm -hmm. social, re social relationships, social cohesion, the yeah, true so, social so, cohesion. Yeah. yeah, social cohesion cannot be maintained with the sort of standard morality. We have to have what might be called a, uh, sometimes called, a, um, I'm trying to think of the word that the philosophers usually use, um, well, uh, super erogatory, a super erogatory uh, uh, reform of what it means to be a good person. And it's a wonderful thing about human nature. I think uh, Piaget showed it, other investigators have showed it, that human beings uh, normally develop to be biologically coded to want to be good people. We could make uh, rational and ethical decisions uh, through democratic processes with the advice of well done scientific research, monitoring what's happening, everything that John Dewey dreamed of when he dreamed of an experimental society that would gradually perfect itself by treating its institutions as hypotheses. Uh, we, we, we can do all this. <laughs> it's, uh, Absolutely. It, it's, it's possible. It uh, requires a, a consciousness that a, a profound paradigm sh change and shift is mm. needed in, in our thinking. Mm. So that's what I can say briefly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. <laughs> so that's just a little taste of this brilliant and incredible contributor. Now, I think I've got to get you in the picture here. Where are you, Howard? I'm looking for your picture. Did we lose connection? Evelyn, did okay. you see Howard? Here I, here I am. I got, I got, I got turned my... I was silenced. I turned myself on. Ah, uh, okay. Turn yourself okay. on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because now we, I'm glad you turned yourself on. Now we're going to get listen to you and your wonderful acceptance speech. And you can say something after that if you have uh, additional let's additional comments you'd like to share. And I want to make sure okay. I've got the right one. Hang on a second. That's it. Here we go. Howard's wonderful acceptance speech. Hi. Uh, I don't receive an award like this very often. So far, only once in 83 years. At the rate I'm going, I'd have to wait until after my 166th birthday to have another opportunity to explain such an important concept to such a wonderful audience. The important concept is structural humiliation. The wonderful audience is you. Structural humiliation has a flip side. It is create dignified livelihoods that do not depend on jobs. Digni humiliation is the problem, dignified livelihoods are the solution. They're two sides of the same coin. Now structural humiliation, did I say that right? Structural humiliation is the inevitable consequence of a labor market that depends on sales revenues. The employees make goods and services, the firm sells them, and part of the money from sales goes to pay their wages. This is the metal box that we're in. Now thinking globally, in the modern world system, the overall result is that the people who need to sell something to, to get some money vastly outnumber the employers who find it profitable to hire them. Is that clear? Now, similarly, it's impossible to lift all the poor out of poverty by making them all into micro entrepreneurs with micro businesses. Believe me, it's mathematically impossible. So, inevitably, millions will be 
humiliated. They cannot perform as a human being is expected to perform. They can't comply with normal expectations like dressing nicely, paying bills, supporting your kids. So a world where decent jobs are scarce is a win or lose world. In the ensuing conflict, racism, sexism, mass migration, prejudice against migrants, violence against truth, violence against basic civility, and violence against Mother Earth become inevitable. You think about that, uh, you know, we see how it, how it has to happen. Therefore, in a world like ours, where good jobs are scarce and somebody's got to lose, we've got to make a win-win world. How do we do that? An ethical imperative. Create dignified livelihoods that do not depend on sales. Donate regularly to a nonprofit. Your donation helps, combined with others, to create a good job for somebody. Now, at the level of public policy, move income from natural resources to the public purse. An example would be Norway's huge sovereign wealth fund. Then from the public purse, pay people to reforest after fires and in general to save humanity from ecological disaster. No more worthy work could be more dignified and there is a way to pay for it. There are more than one. So these two examples, one, one, one is where I donate to a nonprofit, the other is where the state gets control of natural resources and recycles that money to create dignity. Those, these examples could be multiplied over and over with many more. So when you understand the problem and find, you start thinking about what the problem is and how to solve it, you'll find that the positive possibilities are unbounded. Thank you so much, Howard. What an inspiration. I'm looking to get you in the spotlight. And so I'm looking for your camera. So Howard, if you haven't turned on your camera, turn it on or I will try to find it. I hope you're, oh, I see it. There you are, Howard. I'm putting you in the spotlight now. There, that's what I would love to see. All of us, please give Howard a round of applause with your reaction buttons. We are so thankful that you're an inspiration to all of our work and your message of dignified livelihood is enormously important to all of us. Evelyn, do you want to add something before I give him the award? <laughs> <laughs> Oops, unmute your microphone, dear Evelyn. I would like to say something, but first I would like to make a good picture of us. And for that, dear Howard, please move your camera so that we do not see the ceiling, but your face. <laughs> Can you move? Can you move in front of the camera a bit? Um, yeah, am I, am yeah, I in front yeah, yeah, yeah. Bravo. Now? Yes, okay. bravo, bravo, bravo. Now there will be the big award, award picture, okay? Okay. <laughs> so just smile and there will be the award picture. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. And now, you know, if you allow me, how, uh, two minutes, three minutes, Linda, for some words? Two minutes for some words, please. Yeah, yeah. Dear, dear Howard, you are one of the deepest thinkers of our time. You are a philosopher of social science and a scholar of peace and global studies. We so much thank Alicia Cabezudo, who has registered for our workshop now for introducing you to us in 2006. Dear Howard, I have no words to thank you for including us in your lifelong journey of reflection on how a dignified future of humankind may be possible. It is an enormous privilege to have you as esteemed member in the Global Advisory Board of our community and as a core founder of our World Dignity University Initiative. Also, I personally are 
deeply indebted to you. You have authored the foreword for the book on dignity and solidarity that I just finalized. You have lovingly supported its coming into being in practice and with your theory building. You have taught and lectured all around the world, living in Chile and often working in South Africa, together with our dear Gavin Anderson, with whom you founded the Unbounded Academy. I had the privilege of joining you in both places, Chile and South Africa. In 2012, you kindly invited me into your intellectual universe in Chile. You generously declared your home in Chile to be one of the Dignity Dialogue homes of our Dignity community. And this was also my home for many weeks in 2012. Our dear Brian Ward, who is with us here now, he made a wonderful plaque for our Dignity Dialogue homes in 2011 in New Zealand. And I took this plaque with me all the way to you, dear Howard, in Chile in 2012. Then in 2013, you kindly joined us in our Dignity Conference in Stellenbosch in South Africa, hosted by our dear Helene Lewis, who is with us with us just now too. And our dear Joy Ndwandwe, who participated yesterday with us. Mm -hmm. After our conference in Stellenbosch, we worked in Pretoria for many weeks together with our dear Catherine Odora Hoppers, and your lovely granddaughter Justine did the video, video recording of our dialogues, and we saw something now. And now I think I stop. I will put this uh, text on the website because I go on because I wanted to show you a little bit of the uh, a little glimpse of how it's brilliance, both intellectual and ethical brilliance, um, and especially the concept of solidarity, which is in the title of my book, and how Howard defends the use of this word. But please go to the website. I will put that text on there. I think now my time is out. Thank, Thank you, you so Evelyn. Much. Thank you so much. Now, Howard, we have an award for you, but we'd like to give you the floor to have a few words before we give you the award. So it's over to you, Howard. <laughs> um, I, the, what, one thing I should say is that uh, my, uh, my, my screen is unstable. Every now and then it sort of blanks and doesn't work. So um, don't, don't be surprised if I suddenly uh, become paralyzed and don't, uh, don't <laughs> exist anymore. Um, I, I, well, I'm, I'm really impressed by this workshop. It's just amazing uh, that there's so many brilliant people around the world doing such, such good work. It's, it's such, a, such, a, uh, such a light in a, in a, dark, in a darkening, dark, darkening world. So I really want to congratulate all, all the people who are here and all the people who, who've made it possible. And I hope that our, our dear Uli won't be too discouraged and we really will go forward with the World Dignity uh, University. And uh, even though it's been a long time uh, in gestation, that we'll, we'll actually uh, move on some of the things that were uh, 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 a little bit discouraging for Uli because he worked so hard and got so little response, but we'll, we'll try to make it up to Uli and really, really uh, we say in Spanish, poner las pilas, <laughs> so, <laughs> what are, get our batteries going. I might mention that I've just been asked to lead a, a chair uh, at the level of Latin America, um, which is, uh, I believe, I have to confirm this, I believe it's accredited in both Ecuador and in Chile. So that's something I want to check out. That might be a building block for the World Dignity University, but it might be also a false alarm. Um, uh, what, what else do I want to say? Maybe I don't want to say anything more. Maybe I think I've used up my time and uh, um, and uh, I'd be, um, well, okay, I'll say, I'll say one more thing if I get the excuse more. But the one more thing I want to say is this. Uh, if you study Orthodox mainstream economics, one of the things you'll learn about it is that it cannot be refuted by facts because it's set up logically in such a way that it doesn't, all the facts have to confirm it by definition. So there's no logical way you can find evidence that it's wrong. But what you can do and what, I, what uh, Gavin and I did in our book that uh, Dignity Press is publishing, Economic Theory and Community Development, we set up an alternative conceptual system, which is also true by definition. It's like, uh, like the periodic table of the elements. The elements are, by definition, what the periodic table says they are. Well, we've, we've purchased a, 
a counter theory, which we call unbounded, uh, in the sense that we're, we're not against anybody. We're, we're want dignity for everybody. And we're, we're calling for really an, an, an ethical upgrade. And I, I, I believe an ethical upgrade is, is, is possible. I'm, uh, I, I was, we were just talking in our, uh, in our, in our small group about, about Kohlberg's theory. And I just wrote a memo to uh, Evelyn recently in which I said, if we could just get everybody to the, at least the th third level of Kohlberg's <laughs> development in the world, and then we could make the ethical upgrade they would make it possible to transcend economics uh, and sort of move beyond economics uh, to uh, what you might call a, a post-economic society that still learns from doesn't read. I mean, neoliberals aren't wrong about everything. Neither are Marxists. Uh, everybody has something to contribute. So how? Howard, I think your connection is fading on us, but we have heard every single word. We might have lost Howard. So we have to give him his award soon. Here's what his award will look like, but we haven't figured out how to get it to him. It's a little heavy for mailing, but we'll catch up with Howard. Please, everyone, you would you write your congratulations to Howard in the chat so we can give that to him and share that to him with him when he's back in the room. And um, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Howard, wherever you are, you're an inspiration of all of us. For all of us, thank you for being a beacon of dignity in the world and in all of our lives, Howard. We're so glad you're with us.